Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Friday now, the 5th of September, 2025. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. The big question we all have, what's going on with Invest Area 91L? And I promise we're going to get to that in very short order. First, I do want to take a look at Kiko out in the Pacific because it's headed in the general direction of Hawaii. And I know there's been a few videos and posts out there that this could be a real problem for our friends in Hawaii, and I want to put that thing down quickly because it's not. Let me show you the map here, tracking map. Here's Kiko out in the East Pack, almost to the Central Pacific. And yes, it's headed in the general direction of Hawaii. And let me tell you something. If you've got plans to visit out here, keep them. Don't worry about this. At the worst, you'll get some increased swells and maybe some rain showers. That is it. This is going to weaken and it's not going to be anything to worry about, so forget any negative, scary stuff you might have seen elsewhere, because it is not true. It's a Category 3 now, but in the next few days it's going to encounter a less favorable thermodynamic environment, and that will be that. And as well, might as well mention our Lorena over here. Big time forecast bust overall, a lot of the guidance. And then the Hurricane Center forecast had it coming in. Nope, did not happen. It's going to stay out over the open waters of the East Pack, and even the rainfall in the desert southwest was way less than even I thought would happen. So yeah, even in 2025, with all the models that we've got and everything else available at our fingertips, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the AI stuff, everything, sometimes we still get fooled and things go awry. And that's certainly what happened there with Lorena. And that might help us a little bit with what we're going to talk about uh, in terms of 91L. So let's get to that, shall we? The big topic of the day. So here it is on the satellite animation. We'll point out a couple of other things first. There is our little area of spin in the Gulf. I thought I'd point that out. Very strong upper level winds kind of tearing away any thunderstorm activity. But we do have a little vigorous spin over the warm waters there that we should watch because, hey, it's September the 5th. You might as well. This is an upper level low spinning around north and east of the Leeward Islands over here. And if that persists for many, many more days, some of that energy can work its way down to the surface. It sort of transitions from a cold core system into one that's more warm core and totally convectively driven. And you can get a tropical cyclone out of it. Don't see that happening, but you never know. This is our area of interest right here at least the biggest one right now, 91L. Pretty good rotation to it overall, got that little S shape, but it is not looking any more organized really than we were expecting if this was going to go on to really be something. In fact, if we look at the close-up of it here, the floater image as it's called, what do you notice? Well, let me point out one thing. This is really important. Look at this area of storms that fires up and then very abruptly collapses and goes away. That is not a good sign. Anytime you have air in the tropics around these systems that is not going up and staying up and being like a, uh, a big thunderstorm and instead it's collapsing and you get these outflow boundaries, collapsing thunderstorms with a developing tropical wave, that is a big thumbs down for the system itself. You understand mechanically that's not healthy for a tropical wave and it looks like there's just too much dry air around still. Not dust, I don't want to hear that. Oh, the dust killed it off. No, it's just too much dry air. Maybe some sinking air, we call that subsidence. There's just a general lack of forcing going on in the tropics right now and it is affecting this. And if you go back and watch yesterday's video, I did mention that the small size to the system might affect its ability to either grow quickly or it could die quickly. And these smaller systems where you really don't have much to work with at all are more susceptible to any negative factors around them. And in this case, the lack of deep tropical moisture does seem to be a problem. The general non-forcing of the atmosphere definitely seems to be affecting it and it's not convecting, it's not creating a lot of deep thunderstorms and that's preventing it from really taking off. But clearly, you can see the rotation down here at the surface. Definitely a vigorous low-level rotation. You can see that on the vorticity signature. You know what? It's one of my favorite tools to show. There it is. 
easy to pick out, but you know, you can have all the low level vorticity you want, and if you don't have deep thunderstorm activity to release that heat and lower those air pressures, you're just not going to get development. We do have some vorticity, very circular, in the Gulf, and again, we'll watch that, but there's a lot of dry air around here as well, and the upper level winds are just too strong to really worry about that too much. So with all this going on, it is probably a surprise to literally no one, especially people that know what they're looking at, that the models are generally backing away from this system developing. There it is in the GFS from the 12Z run today. And let's look at what happens with it over the next week, right? There it goes. It tries to develop there, kind of merges with another little piece of energy over here. And instead of continuing to consolidate and becoming a big threat to the islands, it doesn't in this run. Now, is this going to change later? I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know. But again, I think it's easy to look at this and say, you know, the small size of this system probably gives us an idea. Yeah, it's probably not going to do too much. That being said, I want to zoom in on this area as best I can. Even as it is depicted here, 126 hours out, that will bring impacts to our friends in the islands. And I never, ever, ever want to downplay something as being nothing to worry about, except Kiko, because it won't be anything to worry about. I already talked about that. But it is different here in the Eastern Caribbean. You have these mountainous islands, just like Hawaii is, but a tropical wave that is pretty vigorous coming through is different than a dying old tropical storm in the East Pac or the Central Pacific, right? So yes, this will bring some impacts and people that might not realize it, maybe they just moved there or they are going down there to enjoy the beautiful weather for a day or so, just this alone tells you, no, the weather's not gonna be too beautiful. Now, certainly that is better than a full blown hurricane going by, duh, we get it. But that is not the same as there being nothing there. Interestingly enough, it goes into the Caribbean and dies away. A lot of this has to do with the overall fast trades. We call this the graveyard of the Caribbean for a reason. If it's not already a well-developed system, it usually doesn't get to be one because of the overall environment of the Eastern Caribbean. Now the Euro, same kind of deal. 6Z run today, and in fact, the Euro was really picking up on this yesterday, and uh, we're all thinking like, hmm, maybe this is going to have some problems. And again, I come back to the overall size of our feature here. It just isn't very large, and the 6Z Euro just shreds it out. Look at all that energy. The vorticity is strung out. There's that other little piece. It's like it's been run over on a highway, and that is that. But it's not shear. I want to make that very clear. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of wind shear. There's just this lack of forcing, kind of some dry air around. I know I'm rehashing this a little bit, but understanding what went wrong, and I'm going to show you like where we went from to where we are now, and it is remarkable, and especially considering it's September 5th, you'd expect that we'd have a lot more action going on, and so something is definitely amiss. Something's missing from those puzzle pieces that I so often talk about, and the Euro really started picking up on it, I guess, yesterday, and uh, it's really not developing it much either. But let's go back in time. That's the beauty of the internet is everything is there. Unless it gets deleted, I guess. But you get the idea. It's all there and we can time travel. So let's do just that. Let's go all the way back 48 hours ago. I'll highlight this for you. We'll use yellow. September the 3rd and the 12Z run from the GFS just two days ago gave us that outcome, whoa, that's a big difference. And it went on to menace, you know, I can show you now because it's not going to happen, it appears. It went on to make landfall in Hugo country, right? A lot of people saw that. And again, it's, it's easy to show you now because I think this is going to be on the downtrend. But how did we get from that to this? Let's back that sucker back out. And again, I do think it's the small size of our feature. Uh, that's 120 hours out, and this is about where it was on the GFS a couple days ago at roughly that same time frame. Nope, doesn't look like that is going to happen. And to be fair, the Euro was also developing this pretty robustly 
two days ago, so you can't just blame it on the crappy GFS. Everybody likes to bang on the American model there. But our good friend the Euro is also, oh, look, this is going to develop and head towards the islands, and this could be a big problem. And that's why I said in my video yesterday, in fact, the thumbnail was 91L could be a problem. And that is a, a, a big lesson in not being too deterministic and bold with your statements. Could and will be are two entirely different outcomes. And I was a little suspicious of the size of this thing and that, you know, I've seen this play before, basically. And it looks like we have all been had by the models once again. But 24 hours from now, maybe things change. But I doubt it. And the reason I doubt it is we have the evidence from some smart people out there. Smarter than me in many cases, to be honest with you. Uh, some of these people have PhDs, and I do not. So there's that. Anyway, uh, Dr. Ryan Maui. Interesting, he says, to note that the AIFS, which is the AI forecast system from the Euro, poofed our Invest 91L at least two forecast cycles before the regular full physics ensemble systems, at least through the next seven days, little development is expected, although we could see a brief depression or storm. So the AI models, and let's just increase the size of that there image, uh, some activity getting picked up on off the coast of Africa, down the road a piece, but very little with our area of interest out here, Invest 91L. The AI saw it before the regular physics models did, evidently. And then, of course, this post here from Tomer. That was quick, he says. Most models and ensembles have lost development of an invest area 91L, and while its remnant moisture may still impact parts of the Caribbean, development into a tropical cyclone appears to be increasingly unlikely. So pretty wild how things can go just in a 48-hour, 24-hour, whatever, time frame. And again, I think that the evidence points to the forcing. So this is an interesting Hovmuller diagram. I want to try to explain this as best I can. This is the tropics right through here that we're interested in. You know, So this is a Mercator projection map, like a little film strip version of it, showing the tropics a few degrees, 15 north and south of the equator. Our tropical system of interest is roughly in this area here, let's say, all right? This is where we are in time. See, 5th of September. And all of these colors here show us forcing versus not forcing, basically. In other words, in the meteorological context of things, the ensemble mean 200 millibar velocity potential. But it's easier for you to understand that these colors through here, not very favorable, yes favorable, very favorable. Not favorable at all, little favorable. You get it, green is go, and not green is basically... <laughs> Don't go. Don't, you know, the whole bit, right? So where we are now, just not very favorable. In fact, as we move through time, there's the 7th, there's the 9th, and you equate this to where we are geographically, all of this is even less favorable going forward. So basically, from a meteorological perspective, this system had the deck stacked against it pretty much from the get-go, that even climatology is not going to save it. And what I mean by that, just because it is September 5th, just because we have very warm water, and just because we have a vigorous tropical wave, does not mean we always get a tropical cyclone out of it. When will things get favorable, one might ask? Well, according to this particular set of data, and that's what this does show us, later in the month, after about the 15th or so, things should start to get favorable. And look, we can kind of laugh at this. Well, we, it just keeps getting pushed back. And we'll address this next thing another time because I want to get this video done and on the YouTubes there and Patreon. I put them on Patreon too, just so you know. We have seen this the last few years and one has to wonder, are we in some kind of a new paradigm shift or is it, as a, is, is it a temporary weirdness? In other words, 2022... Remember, Ian, of course you do, late September. Stuff didn't really blossom until late September. Same thing last year, really. Helene was September 27th, for goodness sakes. Milton, on into October. Michael, 2018. I know that we're getting up on six years now since Michael. 
but these late September, October shifts to a more active period are not as uncommon as one might think. So uh, another way to look at it, more of a backloaded season appears more likely than anything happening over the next week to 10 days. All right. So there you go. That is that for now. We'll see how things evolve. I will be around this weekend and I'll post a couple of videos, of course, and we'll see what goes on with our interesting little 91L out there that I do believe we're going to start to see these probabilities come down and we'll have to watch for potential rain impacts and squally weather for our friends in the Eastern Caribbean. And unless there's some weird surprise, this should start to downtrend as we move through the next few days. All right. So at least some good news for us as we head into the weekend, especially considering everything else going on in our world. All right. Enough of that. Let me get this online for you. As always, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you again a few times over the weekend.